Fox Sports. We are the We are the We continue to believe in it in this group. I think, um, you know, coming into the season, we thought we'd you know have an offense that was capable of scoring enough runs to, um, you know, for us to compete. And you know, it, things haven't played out maybe as well as we would have hoped to this point. But we still believe in the talent that the guys have, and if they're healthy, that you know, they should be able to produce at those levels. From Progressive Field on a warm evening in downtown Cleveland, Ohio, it's Indians baseball tonight. Cleveland will try to even up this four-game series against the Chicago White Sox. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Chicago came into town having hit the fewest number of home runs in the American League. And the Indians, well, they've had problems with the home run ball, too, because they've given up 21 more home runs than they have hit and last night, that was the story of the ball game. Well, Chicago, that's their high on the season. They hit four home runs. Milky Cabrera, one from each side of the plate. Ramirez hit the big three-run home run, and Eaton joined the party, too. Some fastballs that they like to hit. And I'll tell you, the White Sox came out storming last night. The Indians couldn't score. Samarja, you know, pitched very well against the Tribe. But the White Sox scored eight runs. They're going to face Corey Kluber today. And, you know, when you think about Corey Kluber going up against the Chicago White Sox, he dominated them. Last year, this year, in his two starts, uh, he's 0-1. Well, that's the thing that's tough to figure with Corey Kluber. We know he's had a tough time with run support, but specifically within the Central Division, he's had his problems this year. Yeah, that's unbelievable. 0-5 Corey Kluber is against the Central. Coming off a very good start against the Reds, but his offense treated him to nine runs. He's 2-1 in his last three starts. The Indians are going to be facing Jose Quintana. He's 4-1 in his career against the Cleveland Indians, so they're going to get left-handers for the next three days. All right, when we come back, Andre Knott will join us to tell us what Tribe General Manager Chris Antonetti is thinking with the trading deadline fast approaching. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud sponsors of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO.
One week away from the trading deadline, and rumors continue to swirl around Major League Baseball. John Paul Morosi of Fox Sports reporting that the Orioles are teetering on the brink of selling at this point, two games under 500. He also reports, reports that the Blue Jays are actively talking to the White Sox about Jeff Samarja, who pitched a very good yeah. game last night against the Indians. Right. And it was also uh, yesterday that the reports came out that the Blue Jays had inquired with the Indians about the availability of Carlos Carrasco. Um, let's go down to Andre Nod, who has more on that as... Indians general manager Chris Antonetti met with the media before the game today. He did meet with the media today, and whether he was a buyer or a seller, he basically said he doesn't see himself as either. They love their young rotation, and I'm sure phone calls have come in, but he says at this point in time, he enjoys having his pitching staff, and he does not want to change. He likes having Danny Salazar part of his rotation. <laughs> he likes having Carlos Carrasco as part of his rotation. And he said they put a team together back in April that they felt like can score enough runs. And the one thing they're looking at is another team that we'll see here in a couple days. The Kansas City Royals at this time last year, they were sitting at about under 500. And they somehow found a way to make it home. Here's what he had to say about the Royals and the team that they're playing off of. There's still a lot of teams uh, clustered together and uh, still have a chance of making the postseason. You don't have to go back, you know, if you look just back a year ago at this time, I think Kansas City was right around 500. And, went on and played in the World Series. So I think there are a lot of teams to look that look towards that example and think you know, we could make a run and get to the postseason in advance. So uh, now we'll see how that plays out over the next seven days. Well, if that's going to happen, they're going to have to start scoring more runs. It's just as simple as that. Yeah, I, I don't see the Indians going out and getting any pieces here. I, I really don't. They're going to stay the course. They're going to play with what they have. And you know, it's it's the guys. There you go. Kluber, you got to score them some runs. They scored them the last time. They have to play better at home. They have to play better in their division if they even want to seriously think about contending. And before you can start contending, you got to get to that 500 mark, and that's where they have to get first. Well, they're 45 and 49 coming into play here tonight. Chicago is 43 and 50. The two teams have split 10 games so far this year. And for Corey Kluber, the story has been and will continue to be run support. If they score for him, he's going to win. Uh, they haven't done that. In fact, if you look at his nine starts that he's made at home this year, and we talk about the team's problems winning at home this year, they've scored more than two runs for Kluber in his nine starts this year at home one wow. time. That's wow. when they scored three in his first home start of the year against Detroit. Well, that's got to change. That's all there is to it. Got to change. All right, Indians did make one roster move, and it will have an impact on tonight's game. Before the ball game, they recalled Jesus Aguilar from AAA Columbus. He was is in the starting lineup. He'll be at first base tonight. He'll be batting seventh. Carlos Santana will be DHing, and you see there Kyle Crockett, left-hander out of the bullpen, sent back to AAA Columbus. Corey Kluber on the hill. Let's take a look. At the starting lineup for Robin Ventura and the White Sox, brought to you by Toyota. Adam Eaton, one of the homer hitters for Chicago last night in the leadoff spot. Tyler Saladino batting second. Malky Cabrera hit two out last night. He bats third. Jose Abreu fourth. Adam LaRoche fifth. Avisel Garcia sixth. Alexei Ramirez also homered for Chicago last night. He bats seventh. Tyler Flowers gets to start behind the plate, hitting eighth. And Carlos Sanchez will hit ninth. Tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher is Corey Kluber, 5-10 and 10 on the year, 159 strikeouts and 141 innings. Corey is making his third start against the White Sox this year. He's 0-1, 420 earned run average. They roughed him up in his first time uh, go-round, and uh, he had a no decision in his second time, pitched a very good ball game in his career, 4-3 and three against them. 3-5 and five at home, and right-handers hitting just 201 against Corey Kluber. So we'll see that good slider, that cutter, and we'll see what he has to offer tonight. The defense behind him brought to you by Chrysler is Avilas in left, Brantley in center, Rayburn is over and right. Urshela back in there at third, Lindor at short, Kipnis at second, Aguiar is getting the start at first, and Gomes behind the plate. Adam Hamari behind the plate tonight. Mike McClinsky is at first base. The acting crew chief is Bill Miller. He's at second. Marty Foster down at third. Our window systems game time temperature 77 degrees. Got some warmth today. It felt like summer. 
It was beautiful. Still is. And we are ready to go. Adam Eaton digs in, ready to start for Chicago. And he swings at the first pitch, a liner to left. Mike Avilas is there to make it, make the catch for out number one. Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Keep the big hitters in the park and give Corey Kluber some run support. Well, nothing new. You, Kluber throws one pitch, and the leadoff man's getting after it, and he has one out. A lot of teams have been much more aggressive against Kluber this year. Tyler Saladino takes a look at ball one. It's inside. And that's foul out of play. Just a bit outside, and it counts two and one. Corey Kluber this year has made eight starts against the Central Division. He is 0 and 5 and a 431. Last year, 7 and 5 with a 255 overall. Chased one downstairs, two and two. Got a miss, and Corey Kluber strikes him out two down on the first. Coming back on our uh, a good cutter. Let's check it out on our Nissan pitch tracker. There it is. That's that's a good one. He's gone a few starts where he hasn't had good break to that cutter, and he's gone more to the slider. But that's a good sign tonight. That cutter right there at about 89 miles per hour outside edge gets strikeout number one. Round ball, big hopper. Mm, nice inning. And Kipnis throws out Melky Cabrera. Kluber cruises through the first on seven pitches. The Indians are coming to bat when we come back. Jason Kippen is ready to lead things off for Cleveland. Let's take a look at the rest of the starting lineup for Terry Francona, brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Francisco Lindor in the two hole, really heating up in his last 11 games, six multi hit efforts. Michael Brantley bats third, then it's Ryan Rayburn in the cleanup spot. 
As the Indians loaded up with right-handed bats, Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes, then Jesus Aguilar, Giovanni Urshela, and Mike Avilas rounded out. Jose Quintana is tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher. And Quintana, we talk about Kluber. Quintana has lower run support than Kluber. He's at 2.6 runs per game with the White Sox. He hasn't gotten a lot of support. He's 4-9 on a year, 383 earned run average. He's only walked one batter in his last five starts. He has had impeccable control, and that one walk came in his last start. He had four straight games where he did not walk a batter. His biggest problem this year, if he has one, is the first inning. Like a lot of starting pitchers, if you're going to get to Jose Quintana, you better do it early. You know, we, we talk about that first inning, and that's been the bugaboo for the White Sox. All They've been outscored by a boatload in the first inning. They've given up, what, 72, 73 runs in the first inning. In the dirt. One on one. Yeah, I think it's 72. That's what I had yesterday. Remember, it was 27, 72. 72. Yes, yes. Yeah, 72 to 27, right. Kipnis with a ground ball and a nice stop made by Sanchez gets up and throws him out. Good range by the White Sox second baseman to take a hit away from Kipnis. Let's set the Sox defense for you. Brought to you by Chrysler tonight. Cabrera and left Eaton and center Garcia over and right. Saladino at third. Ramirez at short. Sanchez at second. Abreu at first. Flowers tonight is doing the catching. Francisco Lindor, two for four last night. Drove in the Indians' only run with a base hit in the sixth inning. Fly ball to left field, shallow. And a long run in for Melky Cabrera, two down. Michael Brantley. He'll step in 0 for 3 last night with a walk. Two quick outs here in the first. At the knees for a strike. Quintana has been tough on left-handers this year, hitting just a buck ninety-eight off them. A couple of years ago, he was known as Mr. No Decision. Seventeen no decisions, 2013 American League record. Well, as we detailed many times, a lot of that is due to that whole run support issue. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, he, he can go deep into games for you, but he has uh, not had a lot of support is right. A little bit low, two balls and a strike. Pitches from the first base side of the rubber. He'll cut it into the right-handers, change up, good fastball. Brantley smokes it down the right field line. That'll head to the wall in a hurry. Garcia's got a terrific arm. His throw, not in time. One too many hops on the throw from right field for Garcia, who played the carom well. But Michael Brantley with his 28th double of the year. One behind teammate Jason Kipnis who has been the pace setter in the doubles category this year in the American League. Well, Michael got the fastball he wanted, put a really good swing on it. And you got to be careful out there. Garcia leading the league with 10 uh, assists, outfield assists, but this one couldn't get it in on time. And that boy, Brantley's knee went right into that bag. That didn't feel good. The corners of those bases are awfully hard. Well, you've got a runner in scoring position now for Ryan Rayburn. And he takes a first pitch strike. Yeah, and he was no get me over fastball. Dropped in a nice breaking ball. 
Rayburn has not seen a lot of action here in the month of July. Just two for 12 at the plate, and a lot of those have been pinch hit appearances. Well, anytime you face the White Sox, Rayburn wants to play. His best numbers are against the White Sox in his career. 299 hitter. There's 18 homers, 79 ribbies. And the White Sox people know. They say, oh, boy, we know Rayburn's going to be in there. Seems like every time we play the Sox, he's done something. Some, something positive. Let's see if that trend continues here in the first. Good at the pitch. knees, Good low pitch. pitch right at the zone, bottom of the zone, one and two. Well, I'll tell you, that was well located. No score, bottom of the first, runner in scoring position for Ryan Rayburn. Up and in, spun him out of the way, it's two and two. Tyler Flowers behind the plate after giving those signs, got his Friday night nail polish on. You can see it well. It is fluorescent. Yes, it is. Helps the pitcher see it. There's one up and in. They know that Rayburn has good numbers against him, so they're going to back him off a little bit. There you go. Easy for the pitcher to see. Now the 2-2 offering. Yes, he did. And the appeal, he went around, says first base umpire Mike McClinsky, and the inning is over. Quintana gets his first strikeout, and we are scoreless after one. with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcast stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Jose Abreu to lead off for Chicago here in the second inning. He was one for four last night. This is the one guy that uh, Corey wants to be careful with. He's hitting 360 off him with a couple of home runs and six ribbies in his career. Out of play. You know, he came off to that monster year last year, and you know, trying to duplicate that as a, as a rookie, tough to do, but he's, he's having a pretty steady year. And in this lineup, you figure, this is the one guy we are not going to let beat us. Two balls and a strike. And because of the lack of productivity of the guys around him, teams have been able to pitch around a break. Right. 
That's Drives true. this one to center field, but right there is Michael Brantley. One away. Well, let's look how he approaches to get by, uh, Abreu out. Started with a fastball up and in. He went fastball four seam away. Tried to run one in. Good pitch to seamer. And then went with a little cutter down and away. And he just couldn't get out there. You know, maybe that first pitch or something inside certainly helps. Keeps him from uh, going down and away. Adam LaRoche was victimized by the breaking ball last night. The Indians got him to chase the balls out of the strike zone consistently. Takes a look at a fastball away. LaRoche was 0 for 4 and punched out three times. Yeah, he looked like he just had one of those nights where nothing went right. That fastball was up and he fouled it back. One and one. Hit hard, but foul up the first base side. Boy, not by much. See, remember we were in Milwaukee. You needed the left-handed fielder yeah, down there. I was going to say, the went to the man. backhand, couldn't make the play. I talked to Jim Folk. Well, we didn't have time to see Jimmy today. Now the one-two. Swung on and missed. Corey Kluber took a little something off, and LaRoche strikes out. Two down. Stat of the game is brought to you by Buick. Lowest run support per nine innings in the American League. You're looking at one and two here tonight, head to head. Quintana and Kluber. And as I mentioned, the, the, the run support here at home in particular, just it's startling. Indians have just not been able to score any amount of runs for Kluber. In his last four home starts, they've scored three runs total. That was against Seattle, Tampa Bay, Houston, and Oakland. The 1 0 to Garcia inside. Obviously, El Garcia was two for four last night. A couple of singles and a run scored. Pulls this one foul. Andre went after it. Look at that. See, he put the bit up. Yeah, uh huh. Another error. <laughs> look, look at he wants to say something. He can't. That goes E10. Watch the hand go out. He's going for it. Yeah, just. Wasn't really good, strong effort. He gator there. armed that one a little bit. Uh, it's the sun in your eyes. Oh, look at pass over the middle. <laughs> You're looking for the linebacker, aren't you? <laughs> Swung on and uh. missed, and the count evens up at two and two. <laughs> you guys are unfair, man. <laughs> we know you can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being married to you two. <laughs> well, you're almost there. Uh. <laughs> Kluber kind of trying to come back from a 2 0 count to get Garcia here. And a foul right back. Now yeah, it looks like Kluber making a conscious effort to pitch the right. He's inside early. Open up the outside part of the plate for the cutter or the slider. That's what I was looking for right here. That cutter away. That's how he got Abreu to start the inning. And there it was, but he got a piece of it. It's a good it. one. It yeah. was a good one. But, you know, as a hitter, if you can foul that pitch off, and it looked like it was going to be a strike, I mean, that's the, the, the key to Corey Kluber is the live for another pitch because he has so many weapons to put you away. Now we'll see what they do after that was the cutter. Maybe put a little more tilt to it. I was just going to say maybe a, a bigger breaking yeah, ball. Yeah, a slider. Yeah, that's what Gomes wants. He got a piece of that. Yeah, that's a. Then you got to come in. That one was off the plate for a ball, and I think it was a cutter again. This is a, this one might have been off the plate. You see, it was down. It was a ball. 
but you can't take it. That's a great job to fall that pitch off. Buzz him in. Going back to it. Cutter. Oh, he froze him. Garcia just could not react. And Corey Kluber with back-to-back -back strikeouts ends the second inning. Well, tomorrow night, 12,500 fans will receive a Larry Doby replica statue. That's courtesy of Key Bank as this White Sox series will continue. All fans can enjoy post-game fireworks presented by Pierre's. Head to Indians.com for your tickets. Carlo, or is Carlos Santana going to lead off the bottom of the second. And Quintana's first pitch is a breaking ball in for a strike. Low and away, he misses to even it up one on one. Santana, you know, we talked about it before. He's starting to draw more walks. All of a sudden, he's back to just behind Jose Batista, second in the league with 64 walks drawn this year. Batista with 68 leads the AL. Yeah, but, but from this side of the plate, Santana, he's hitting for a higher average, 238, but only four doubles, no homers, and just eight RBI. Takes a fastball for a strike to run the count full. Hits this ball high in the air to left field. Cabrera back onto the track. One away. Let's go down to Andre Knott. Interesting, we've, we've talked about Quintana and Kluber and how they're very similar in that they don't get a lot of run support. Any more similarities? The similarities just don't stop. It's amazing. They've made 28 quality starts out of 39 starts this year between the two. But you know the problem they both run into? Pitching in the AL Central. Corey Kluber for the season is 0-5 versus the AL Central. Quintana's 1-5 versus the AL Central. So as good as the numbers are, they don't get a lot of run support. They don't win versus their own division, which is just very odd for two guys that have pitched this well in this season. Rick, does familiarity 
benefit the hitter more than the pitcher. Absolutely. Anytime you're going up against these guys, if you have a track record against them and you've seen them a few times, it's a game of adjustments. It certainly does. And, and if they're not scoring runs for you, you know, they know that there's not much you can do. But both guys have struggled in their own division. It's just hard to say if you don't, if you don't get runs. Jan Gomes singles up the middle, and the Indians have a one-out base runner here in the second inning. Well, they were playing Gomes more to pull uh, the left-hander, and he gets this one up the middle. Ramirez, you can see where he was playing. This one goes right back up the middle for a base hit. So second hit for the Indians, this time a one-out single. Gomes one of three Indians without a hit in their career against Jose Quintana. He had been 0 for 12 with a half dozen strikeouts, but he's got the base hit here to potentially get things going for Cleveland. Now Jesus Aguilar, the 25-year-old, it's his first at bat of the year, taking a called strike. He led the International League at his time of the call-up with the 66 runs batted in. And he has a base hit in the left field. Quintana threw a fastball inside, and Aguilar able to turn it around. And now the Indians with back-to-back -back singles here in the second inning. Yeah, tried to go inside to him, and Aguilar just pulls it in the hole. There it is. It was on the inner part of the plate. It was up a little bit, but he muscles that ball in the left field, so he gets the base knock first and second now. But we have no way of knowing how this is going to play out for Aguilar. We don't know how long he's going to be here. It may be a short-lived thing. It might be, who knows, if he hits, he might be here as long as he continues to swing a hot bat. But we know this, Rick. Going back to spring training, Terry Francona noted that he saw a more comfortable Jesus Aguilar than the one we saw at the big league level last year. Yeah. Well, he's going to get his opportunities. You've got a couple more left-handers following Quintana in this series. So, you know, go out there, do the best you can. Don't worry about it. You're getting an opportunity. One-oh pitch, Rochella couldn't hold up. One one pitch hit fouled on the right side. Geo falls behind on the count one and two. With two aboard and one out Mike Avilas waits on deck. Gomes at second Aguilar at first. Again, he had him caught in between. They said he didn't go. They well, might have caught a break there. Yeah, they may have. They, they wanted the ball up. It was a good pitch. He hit his target. You could see where Flowers is sitting, putting that target up high. He caught a break. That's He's getting an extra one here. And Mike McClinsky was hearing it from the White Sox dugout. Quintana with a 2 2. Broke his bat. Ramirez goes to second for one. Sanchez on the first. It's an inning ending double play. No runs, two hits, one man left. After two, no score.
Field, no score. Third inning. And for Chicago, bottom third of the order. Alexi Ramirez, Tyler Flowers, and Carlos Sanchez do up against Corey Kluber. Matt Underwood, Rick Manning, Andre not down on the field. And up here in the booth, we're happy to be joined now by former Indians pitcher. One of the all-time greats, Gary Bell. Oh, I love you, man. I'd say it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you had 100 wins here, right? Yeah. Well, 99, I think. You know. Did you? Who's counting? I am. <laughs> we got to. Great to see you. How you been? I've been good, man. I'm uh, still, still kicking, getting ready for fantasy camp. Got my fastball up to 12 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Alexei Ramirez singles to start the third inning for Chicago. Yeah, explain fantasy camp to somebody that would, uh, if you were to tell them, hey, you got to come out and enjoy fantasy camps because you've been doing it for over 30 years, right? I have, a bit, this one and the Red Sox. Well, if you're a baseball fan and you love the Indians, it'll be the greatest week of your life, I promise you. It's, a, it's one of the best camps that I've ever even seen or heard of. It's first class big time. If they get rid of Matt and Manning, well, they'd be a lot better, I'll tell you. <laughs> and it'd even go to the top <laughs> shelf, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, you always enjoy it. You always have a great time. You get involved. I mean, you you thoroughly, you really enjoy the week, don't you? Well, it's not I, it's not a matter of, well, i got to go down there and be Gary Bell for a week. And Well, I am being Gary Bell. That's me. That's true. <laughs> that, that's right. I've been nuts from the beginning and I haven't changed. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, a, that's the part of it, I think, that everybody that's involved uh, as a former pro for the Indians, they're, they're there for everybody that wants to come and, and, oh, and yeah. be a big leaguer for a week. Well, tomorrow we're going to unveil the Larry Doby statue here at Progressive Field. Obviously, it's a, a very special time, a very uh, meaningful moment throughout Major League Baseball, not just here uh, for the Cleveland Indians. When you came up, what was it, 1958, your rookie 50, year? 58, yes. Larry Doby was sort of towards the end of his career. What was he? What do you remember about him from the clubhouse, his presence, that kind of thing? Well, you, you got to remember now, guys, that back in those days, uh, there was still a lot of racism going on around the, around the country, you right. know, and, and in baseball especially. And uh, so we didn't we didn't really go out together a lot. But I just remember him as, as being a great ball player and a, and a gentleman, you know. Now Mudcat Mudcat Grant, uh, he knows him a lot better because they were they were roommates, I think. Swing and a miss, throw out a second. Oh, they had him, but the ball pops loose on Kipnis. And Ramirez is in with his 12th stolen base of the yeah, year. Yeah, if Kip can hold on to that ball, he has him. He slides right into it. I don't think he ever caught it to begin with. But Gomes had a nice throw, and the ball beat him to second base. Take a look at it here. See if he catches it. It's a great throw. Right there, just never. It hit the ground in his glove, the end of his glove, right off the fingers. Yeah, it looked like it was just tailing. Any, right there, yeah. never caught it. And he knows it, too. But he'll go in for the stolen base. But uh, uh, that's okay. So you say Mudcat ended up rooming yeah, with, with Larry they, Doby? They, they got pretty close. Yeah, they really did. And uh, like I said, in those days, you know, there was bad stuff going on. But, uh, you know, fortunately it's changed over the years and things are pretty good now. But now you move a little farther down the line. You ended up, didn't you and Mud spend some time together? I yeah. mean, you guys played well, we, together. And, and you, I mean, you, you were. You know how long we've known each other? 60 years. No kidding. Yeah, uh, I know uh, you guys go back a long time. I'm only 52 years old. That's, <laughs> I, I don't know how that works, you know. No, it's it's super. He, uh, you know, we well, we enjoy the, the fantasy camp, especially, you know. Well, you, you asked me why I enjoy it. Well, I'm the judge. I get to pick on people, find them, take their money. Yeah. That's, that's good well, stuff. Well, that's why you two down there, you put a show on that uh, second to none when you get Mudcat down there and you're a part of it. You're the judge. He's your Sergeant Arms. Try to get Charbonneau in there. He ought to be the Sergeant Arms. <laughs> <laughs> He's the bouncer. Where's Big Joe? <laughs> I'm surprised Joe's not here. If he knew you were in town, he'd come see you. Yeah, he probably, he probably owes me money. I think they keep they, they, keep, they keep Joe locked in a crate. They only let him out a few times a month. <laughs> oh, that's not right. <laughs> well, the Indians playing the infield in here to try and cut off a run early in this game. Well, Carlos Sanchez is at the plate. Batting just 202 on the air, but he was one for three last night with a double. Now, Gary, you live down in San Antonio, and you catch a few of our games, right? You still follow the Indians as much as oh, possible. Oh, absolutely. I look at the box scores every day, and uh, occasionally we'll get a feed down there where I remember a couple of years ago I caught you two guys on. I remember the call I gave yes, you. Yes, <laughs> I do remember. You know, if you'd spend maybe $50, you could get us every day. <laughs> it gets away, and the White Sox will take the lead. There's a wild pitch that's going to allow the run. Un 
Boy, I was anxious to see this guy pitch. He's uh, he's a machine. Isn't he's he? he's special. He really is something special. That's going to be a six wild pitch on the year. It's that cutter down and in, and Gomes just couldn't get that body over there enough. It goes off his glove, and Ramirez will score from third. I think that might have been a full blown slider, Rick. The way Kluber it could have been yanked that thing through, and it was down at the at the feet of the left hander, though. Tough for a catcher to get down there and there and do anything with it. Guy who normally has impeccable control, and when he misses his target by that much, it's going to be tough for any catcher to block it. I was watching the gun sign uh, for an inning or so, and I, I thought he threw like mid 90s. He's like a 88 to 92 pitcher. That's a, no, that's a cutter. He throws 93 to 94 with his four seam okay, okay, fastball. Okay, okay. He, he has the slider, straight changeup, which is about 86, 85, 86. Boy, he's a pitcher though. I can tell. Look at him. He's uh, awesome. You know, his his problem and issues this year have been run support. Oh, that's for sure. A rare walk. What do you do? That's a question I want to ask you. When you're out there as a starting pitcher, you know, and your team goes on, you know, you, you may go over 10, 12, 14 starts where the run support is, and I'm sure you pitched on teams that you told me couldn't score. Are you couldn't. Uh, what you're goes through your mind as a starting pitcher? Get some new hitters. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not that easy, my friend. It's not and too you good used to be able to hit for yourself, though. <laughs> it's not too good when the pitchers are out hitting the regulars, you know. <laughs> no, we had we had some teams in the 60s that didn't score too many. But, I mean, does that weigh on you as a pitcher? What, what's well, your yeah. mindset? Do you have to go out there and say, i got to throw a shutout if I want to keep them, you know, close? Or Yeah, well, that, it goes back to the years of the White Sox when they had Horland and Tommy John and Peters and all those guys. They had to pitch. They never scored runs, but they, they had great pitching staff. So did we back in the day, you know. 0-1 oh, to Adam Eaton. He takes a strike over the outside edge. It's quickly 0-2. Oh, you got one of my homies on the team now, you know. Who's that? Jeff Manship, San Antonio. Oh, is, that, is he a San Antonio His boy? kid and mine played Little League together. Yeah, oh. I, know, I know his dad. His dad's a pharmacist there in town. I hope to get to say hello to him while I'm here. Wait, now, hold on. Wait, hold on a second. Jeff Manship's kid and your kid played Little League together? Yeah. Now, Adam Eaton is struck out. Fourth K for Kluber, and there are two down here in the third inning. I've got a range. Now, of, I've got I was going to say, now, why, why does that surprise you? <laughs> I'm Ask your the, next question. I'm doing the math here, and I'm like, wait a minute. Well, Some here don't you, add up. When you have four or five wives and eight or ten kids, <laughs> they all match up somewhere in there, man. <laughs> I'm starting to think it's my fault. <laughs> eight to 80. They keep, you, they keep you young, don't they? Don't be talking about 80. Oh, right? That's too far away. I know it. Oh, man, I can't believe it. Two down for Tyler Saladino. And a swing Ooh, and a miss. That's a little slider there, something, or a spinner, a spinner. He has about three or four different weapons to put you away once he gets ahead of you. Well, he and, throws strikes. You know, hitters are, are now making that adjustment this year. They're starting to swing early in the count, but he still continues to pound the strike zone. He's usually about a 65 to 70% strike thrower. Good for him. He needs to throw a little chin music in there once in a while. Well, he did early. You yeah, know, he, he did earlier a couple of times, but not as much. The guys don't do it like that anymore like you guys used to do it. We loved hitting the hitters in those days. It was fun. <laughs> but you were allowed to, right? Exactly. It was no big deal. Nobody ever charged the mound. There Spun you go. out of the way. That's, that's up and in now for today's game. Yeah. Uh, up and in for me and some of the other guys would see them on their back. Though, you know, well, they, that's true. I know people think that's cruel, but it, they don't mind diving out over the plate and hitting your best pitch on the corner the other way either. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we as you too. Right? I know. That's right. <laughs> that's legal. Go ahead. Check the swing and a foul back. It's one and two. Did That's, guys ever bark at you if you came up and in on? Would they yell at you? Rarely ever. No, I had one guy charge the mound on me in, in 16 years of Pro Bowl. That's amazing. And, and, the, and, and you've the drilled he, plenty. The only reason he came out is the manager told me when he came up to drill him. And I missed him twice before I finally hit him, you know. And uh, He got a little upset with <laughs> it, you? It was Joe Pepitone. Oh, was it really? Yeah, he came to the mound, but he never made it. <laughs> <laughs> Who had him? Who cut Asked him off? You? Well, he was he was talking to my mother on the way to first base, you know, a couple of times, and then finally I got tired of it. And I, I made a comment about his Ital oh, no. Italian heritage, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, he came after me, and Freddie Whitfield jumped on his back between the mound and the and first base. 
The one-two pitch <laughs> is a foul back. And the Yankee dugout emptied, and, and uh, that was in Yankee Stadium, too. The, the whole Yankee dugout's coming out, and I'm saying, oh, my, this You're is not trouble. good. I stayed on the mound because I figured I'd take a downhill shot before they killed me, but then nobody ever got there. <laughs> Yeah, you stayed there. on the mob because half the team was over they, at the first were, baseline. There was legs and arms sticking out of this pile. And, I, and the next day in the New York Times, they had a big picture on the front page, showed the fight, and showed me with my hands on my hips watching the fight. Yeah, and you're the one that started. <laughs> and they didn't throw me out. Best seat in the house. <laughs> yeah, best seat. You never went over to help your teammates. Uh, no, you crazy. <laughs> Clover strikes him out looking. He fans a pair to get out of the inning. But the White Sox strike first, and they lead it one to nothing. Great catching up with you as always. Thanks for stopping by. All right, guys. <laughs> Gary Bell with us Ding here dog. at Progressive Field. Thank Indians you. down a run. Just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. White Sox lead the Indians 1-0 as we go down to the bottom of the third here at Progressive Field. White Sox sort of manufactured a run with a single, a stolen base. Ground ball got him over, and then a wild pitch got him home. Indians had two hits in the second inning, but unable to get a guy home. Now Mike Avilas leads off the third, takes a strike. Avilas 0 for 3 last night. Down on the dirt. Well, Mike has had uh, some success against Quintana, 10 for 23. Boy, he's been staying inside to the righties, hasn't he? Avilas grounds out, one away. Tried to go inside to Aguilar. He was able to get the head out and pull it through the left side for a base hit. But other than that, Kept the Indians off balance. Fox Sports supports proud to team up with Boys and Girls Clubs of America to help young people to reach their full potential through programs that promote character, leadership, education, and more. For more information, visit foxsportssupports.com. Jason Kipnis socks it right back up the gut. Fourth hit of the night for Cleveland. And a one-out base runner here in the third. Great clip of the game from last night. Francisco Lindor. With another multi-hit effort. He had two knocks. One of them drove home the Tribe's only run. 
defensively. Made some smooth plays in the field. And he's up here with one on one out in the third. Hit it off the end of the bat. His first time up, flat out the shallow left. Well, the stolen base ended up paying off for the White Sox. Ended up coming around to score on the wild pitch. He's got a nice slide step. He's quick to the plate. You can't run on him. He gets rid of that ball in a hurry and gives his catcher, Tyler Flowers, a good opportunity for anybody that chooses to run. That's something left handed started just a, a while back. Instead of picking that leg up every time. Yeah. You know that slide step that they teach him and it's boy that works wonders if they can do it. Some some guys can't do it. Slindor is going to get a new piece of lumber. We'll see if Lindor can keep the line moving. That'll help keep the runners well, close. Well, not only that, yeah, he picks you up because if they do want to run, they have to go on first movement. And he throws it over there quickly enough to get you. You know, the Andy Pettits, the, the, those move, Kenny Rogers. He doesn't have a move like that because th those guys, they could pick you off. At will. Oh, Lindor chased one down on the dirt. Second strikeout for Quintana. Two down here in the inning. This time he uh, picked his leg up and he's going to throw him the breaking ball. He's thrown that pitch to the right handers down and in. Flowers does a nice job getting over there. Lindor. Swings at a bad pitch, gets himself out. Chases after it. It's a good job by Flowers to keep it in front of him. And it will bring up Michael Brantley, who doubled his only time up with two outs in the first inning. I told you, he's tough on left-handers, but both Brantley and Kipnis have a base hit off him early in today's game. Not surprising, though, when you consider that Brantley has hit 301 against yes. lefties and Kipnis a very respectable 266. Yeah. Yeah, they hang in there with the best of them. Upstairs, ball one. Michael caught himself a fastball that first at bat and lined it down the right field line. He's hit seven home runs on the year. Four of them have come at home. Back out of play, and it's one on one. The 1-1. One, one. Missed down low. Boy, I was thinking about Gary Bell and how how much the game has changed. You, you think about baseball in the, in the 40s when it was DiMaggio and Ted Williams, the, the sort of the golden era of baseball through the 50s. And in the 60s, 
throughout the time you were playing it. The game went through a transitional period. The game expanded. TV became a, a bigger part of baseball. Less fans were coming to the parks. And, you know, baseball just went through, a, a, a like I said, it was a transitional period. And I think uh, guys like Gary Bell, that, that era of the 60s, it's sort of a, it kind of fell through the cracks in a lot of ways, you know. Well, that's when the players started gaining a little more power. They start, you know, they started the players uh, union, you know, and they, I think their first strike was down around in 72. So, because the owners really controlled the players back then, you know, they owned you. They you couldn't go anywhere. If you didn't play for the team that was drafted, you had to be traded to move on. More night games, too, I guess was the biggest thing. You know, you get in the 60s, a lot more games played at night. The 2-2. Missed inside. Full count. Another good at bat here by Brantley. Now, Jason Kipnis is still held at first by Abreu. They're not just going to let him run wild, but he will get a head start. And Brantley weakly hits it Gonna toward have to Ramirez. Get him at first. Long throw, no chance. Oh, he went back to second and got him. How do you like that? A really heads up play by the savvy veteran Alexei Ramirez. Deep in the hole, he had no chance to get Brantley, and he just sort of buggy whipped it back to second base, and they get Kipnis rounding too far. White Sox on top, one to nothing. As we go now to the fourth inning, Jason Kipnis spent a good five minutes just cleaning himself off. He was full of dirt after he rounded the bag, lost his footing, and then trying to well, scramble back. I'm going to tell you what a heads up play that was by Ramirez. The only out he would have got was at first base. And he, I don't think he could make the throw, so he decided to go behind it at second. And by the time Kipnis turned, he couldn't stop and slipped, and they get him. It was really a heads-up play because he's thinking, I'm going to go to third if he throws it to first. But then all of a sudden, he stops and throws behind him. That's a, a heads-up play by the Sanchez at second base to be ready for that ball, too. That was a, it, He made a great play last night, the two of those guys. And it's not like Kipnis was 10 feet by the bag. I mean, he was two steps past it. I know what he was thinking. He's thinking, yeah. I, got, I, I may go to third base if, if he, he throws, throws it to, to first. first. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he sees it coming behind him, and he had to stop. It was just a a really quick reaction. It was a heads-up play by them.
Melky Cabrera in the hole 0 and 2 and Kluber almost got him to chase after it. One ball two strikes. One nothing Chicago. Wow. Just missed. He tried to pinpoint that one on the outside corner. And the home plate umpire said no. Cabrera shoots that one down the line. Fair into the corner. He's on his way to second base. Bare hand grab and throw by Avila is cut off. And Melky Cabrera has a leadoff double. Boy, well, just sliced it down the line and it stayed fair. That ball didn't get up high enough to really slice and hook foul or slice foul. That was that little cutter on the back door side of it. A lot of times left handers give up on that pitch. He stayed on it. And he did a nice job of getting it down into the corner. So Cabrera, his 15th double and a leadoff double at that. He's having a nice series so far. Jose Abreu, fly to center, is only time up. It's only the second hit tonight for Chicago, but sort of indicative of how things are going for Cleveland right now. They have five hits already in the ballgame, no runs. Chicago had a leadoff single from Ramirez in the third. He stole second, went to third on a ground ball out, came home on a wild pitch. Yeah, yep. Hard ground ball to third. Boy, Urshela stayed with a hard <laughs> smash and throws him out. One away. I'll tell you what, that was not an easy play. That one might have left a mark. Look at, look at, he said, yikes. Yeah, that one is hit hard. The big right-hander turned on it. And he's playing back, and you got to stay in front of that. You're thinking, oh, my goodness, here it is. It was in the glove. He kept it right in front of him. Good concentration. The throw across, and the good thing, they can't move that runner to third. He's been uh, he's been really mm -hmm. consistent there at third base, hasn't he? Smooth. Yeah. He's making every play, make the routine plays. Adam LaRoche takes inside ball one. LaRoche struck out in the second. He has fanned four times in five at bats in the series. Now he'll get the runner over to third. Kipnis knocks it down, but he'll have no play. So it'll be a base hit for LaRoche. And the Sox have two on with one out. Well, you can see he's playing back on that grass. He's going to have to go over and make a backhanded play. He had to lunge for it. Even if he does get there, could he have gotten a throw off in time? That's the hard thing to yeah. see. But it goes off his glove. Cabrera goes to third base. He'll hold there. So it's first and third now with one out as LaRoche gets a base hit. Now, obviously, Al Garcia. He's grounded into seven double plays on the year. Lines it to Kipnis for out number two. Wow, he scorched that ball but right at the Tribe's second baseman. Well, he almost wanted that ball to hop so you could turn the double play. But he hits it on a line. That's okay. They get out number two. He's upset. He went up there looking away because last time... Kluber, when he got to two strikes, went down and away, down and away, and then he took a pitch up in the zone for strike three. Alexei Ramirez with a single in the only run scored last inning. But Chicago threatening with two on, two out here in the fourth. Strike to the outside corner.
Kia in the driver's seat. Alexia Ramirez against the Ohioans this year has had a nice job, done a nice job against everybody else. Different story. Hmm. How about that? 12 RBIs in the 13 games against Ohio. He likes the OH. Well, he's got his work cut out for him now. He will chase pitches in the dirt, but you have a man on third, so you got to be careful. Gomes with a good block. Exactly what I was talking about. It's a good, you, you got to get him to try and swing at one, and Gomes knows it. And he's ready to go down and smother. When you call for it, they want it out of the zone. See if he'll chase it. He did not. Gomes does a nice job of blocking it. Crowd's starting to wake up a little bit here. The one two. Jammed him. That's Popped out. Kipnis. He's in shallow right. He's got it. And the inning is over. Terrific job of pitching by Corey Kluber. Works around the leadoff double and holds the Sox at bay. 1-0 Chicago. Time now to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag STO Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming telecast. It's brought to you by T Mobile. Ryan Rayburn struck out his first time up. He'll be followed by Carlos Santana and Jan Gomes. Popped him up on the infield. In comes the second baseman, Sanchez. One away. Well, the Indians will honor former All-Star Larry Doby tomorrow night, and the club will unveil a new Doby statue outside the right field gate. Joining Bob Feller and Jim Tomey, visit Indians.com for your tickets. Should be a great night tomorrow. 
445 is the unveiling of that statue. Blowing away. Ball one. Fly ball left field over near the line, and it's going to get into the seats of foul ball. Cabrera gave it a long look, but to no avail. But she's got the baseball. One one. Santana takes a strike outside edge. Bounced it in there. Now the payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. That's just the third strikeout tonight for Quintana. But after Santana flowed out, flied out the deep left in the second inning, he comes back with a wicked breaking ball to strike him out. Well, he had a 3-2 pitch. The first head bat, he threw him a fastball in, and Santana just got under it. This time, he says, uh-uh, you're not getting anything on the inner part of the plate. Throws him a breaking ball away, and it looked like Santana helped him out. Jan Gomes, single up the middle in the second inning. One of five Cleveland hits tonight. He's staying right out there. Off speed pitches, change ups away, breaking ball down and in. Quintana looks like the same old Quintana, doesn't he's he? He's pitching. I'm telling you, he's moving around. He's He really is. He's mixing it up very nicely. Gomes punches one toward left field, and Cabrera with a long run in makes the catch. Indians retired in order for the first time tonight. After four, it's still Chicago one, Cleveland nothing.
Northern Ohio Honda dealers. By the Cleveland Clinic, call for an appointment today. And by the game-changing all-new Ford F-150, the future is tough. one nothing Chicago as we go to the fifth. Tyler Flowers, Carlos Sanchez, and Adam Eaton do for the White Sox. Back out of play. Now Flowers, a big guy, he's got power. He is, he's hit seven home runs this year. Yeah, if you find that zone, he's got that one zone that he that he likes. He can hit him. And you're right, he is a big guy. But when you're the catcher hitting 221, seven doubles, only 22 RBI. Routine bouncer to third. Urshela that one. on the run, able to feather the throw over. Four out number one. Corey Kluber tonight has been very much like the Corey Kluber we've seen all season long. He has struck yep. out five. He's given up a couple of hits. He's been you know, kind of a victim of a bad circumstances once again. They haven't been able to scratch out a run of support for say, him. Kluber's been his name self, and so is the Indians' offense to this point. Yep. No, Corey, six outs on three pitches or less. Carlos Sanchez batted a buck 84 going into the All Star break, but he's batted 320 since then. And like a lot of young players, he, he went through a period where he said, You know, I felt good, but then all of a sudden I felt like I can't hit anymore. What happened? Said he couldn't get his head, the, the head of his bat to the baseball. And that's a bad feeling, huh? And that's on a fastball. And that's the pitch, you know, every Look hitter that. feels well, like. He's not getting it there because Kluber just threw him a great changeup and then comes back with, uh, then comes back with a, a pitch that he was just lucky to get a piece of. Robin Ventura, his manager, understands how difficult it can be for a first-year player to break yourself out of a slump like that because he said doubt creeps in yeah and you try harder and harder yeah you you get caught in between you don't know how to minimize the days that you go without a base hit but and, and Ventura said something I'm sure you can really appreciate he said doubt creeps in but if you can make it and stay here then yeah you're, then you're in pretty good shape well you have to continue to battle and uh, and to fight and do the little things i don't know if this guy can bunt at all but you try to do anything you can to get you going to get yourself a base hit and i'm sure you know the guys are working with him over there talking to him the hitting coaches but you, you have to bring it into the game and you have to have success to get that doubt out of your mind yeah, you can get all the pats on the back in the world, but yeah, you hit point. it hard. Hey, that, <laughs> that away, that away. You smoked. I don't care. I want to hit. <laughs> want to make a left-hand turn once in a while. Yes, indeed. Adam Eaton has flied out, struck out, broke his bat here, but Kipnis backpedals his way into shallow right to pull it in. Another quick inning for Corey Kluber. One, two, three. Go the Sox. They still lead it though, one to nothing.
Tomorrow night, game three of this four-game set. Indians White Sox. It'll be Carlos Carrasco going up against Chris Sale. Our night starts with Indians live at 6.30. First pitch at 7 right here on Sports Time Ohio. Jesus Aguilar singled his first time up. His first big league at bat of the year. Takes outside ball one. Well, that first time uh, Quintana tried to throw the fastball inside to him. He didn't quite get it in enough. Started them off change up this at bat. Good fastball location. It pounded was on the outside it, pounded corner. Pounded it outside twice. Now the one two. Trying to get him to go fish for it, but he wouldn't. Now the 2-2 offering. Breaking ball low and away. Down in the dirt. Aguilar showing good patience and, and a good eye to lay off. Full count. Well, he thought he was going to get him to chase one of those pitches. He threw two good fastballs outside. Then he pushed one off the plate he didn't swing at. Now he tries to go down and in with the breaking ball he didn't swing at. 3-2. What's he go with here? Now the 3-2. Another fastball. Going back to the comments that Terry made to me in spring training, he said, you know, you... You hear the reports on Aguilar, and then you hear people say, boy, you know, when in the minor leagues, all the players flock to him. He's kind of like the guy everybody goes up, they want to talk to him. And he said he's got this big personality. He said, we didn't see it last year. He was very quiet, very to himself. But he said in spring training this year, he started to come out of his shell, and hopefully that's a good sign for things to come. He chases and strikes out here. Fourth K for Quintana. Pretty good at bat there for Aguilar, but eventually... The high heater is always a tough well, one to lay off. It is, and he got him with all three fastballs away that time. And he elevated that pitch. He got him to swing and miss. It probably was ball four, but a tough one. It's too tough to take. You know, last year when you're talking about Aguilar coming up here, it's hard to let your personality go when you're not playing every day. He was sitting at bench sporadically. Mm -hmm. And we're a young player. You can't say anything. You sit and observe. And you, and you, you're like a sponge. You take in everything you can take in, and then you, you know, you filter it out. But he wasn't here long enough to, you know, to even let his personality go. You have to play to to get out there and have a personality. Well, and I, and I'm sure you know we're going to see the same sort of thing with. Urshela with Lindor. We have. I, I mean, I've watched them grow since they mm -hmm. first, you know, st stepped down the diamond pretty much together. You know, Lindor now, he's... Comes it, out over time, right? It, yes, it, it, it will definitely come out. It takes a while to feel comfortable up here because this is a, this is scary. You can, there's no room to make a mistake. Wow, he smoked that right back up the middle. Almost took the spikes of Quintana with it. Well, he got inside, broke his bat, and got him to ground into a double play, but a good approach there. Let's go back down to uh, Andre Knott right now. You know, you talk about the, the education of all these young players. On the play where Kipnis overran second base, Michael Villas followed out both Francisco Lindor and Gio Urshela, talking about the situation and explaining to him how not to get in that situation, but also as a shortstop and mid middle infielder, how to play that situation. Uh -huh. So the education for these guys continues. Out of the glove of Ramirez, oh, and they wow. still get the out at second base. <laughs> Even when he messes one up, he still has the presence of mind to not let the game 
speed up on him, and he just gets the out. I mean, Avila smoked this ball that he was able to get a glove on, and then he just flipped it between his legs to second base. Yeah, watch the secondary play here. I mean, he just knocked it down, kept it in the... Look at that. Yeah, on the run. Look at it. Wow. That's all you can say. He is, uh, last night, that play that they almost turned a double play, this one here. You know, in basketball, they call it court awareness. This is field awareness right here. He yeah. knew. Just get, let me flip it to you. He's played a long time. He's only 33 years old, but he's you know, coming up on a year, a deal where his uh, his contract expires. Option. There's a club option. It's right. a lot of money. Ten million. People around Chicago don't feel like the White Sox will pick that up. They may not, but this guy, they're going to have to find somebody that plays every day because he does. He's a gamer. You know, they feel maybe his offense isn't there, but I'll tell you what, he's out there day in and day out, and there's something to be said in that position. Most guys, when they get to this point, you've played seven years in the big leagues, you're 30, mid-30s, you've put on a little weight, a little something. <laughs> he yeah. has. But on two ounces. Yeah, maybe. He's yeah. got the metabolism like most people would kill for He still looks exactly like he yeah, did the he first sure time does. we ever saw him. He sure does. You know, as as you're playing every day and you play through the years, you get to know hitters and you get wiser. You know, so I'm sure he's playing now. He may not have the range he once had. He's still got a very good arm, but he plays a lot smarter than he did when he first came up. It's uh, It's something that, you know, we talk about with regards to shortstops in particular. Not so much second baseman, but shortstops as Avila takes off and Kipnis rips one foul. That's a but, good idea right there, but go ahead. But with shortstops, you're talking about positioning yourself. And so you don't have to dive to make plays because you're smarter. You're in position to make plays. Boy, this guy's had a great series. You know, whether or not that's knowing the hitters, knowing your own pitchers and what they can do. but it's a you, little bit of both. Over time, you don't see the, the, the really good shortstops. They don't have to dive because they're in position every time. Hey. What did you tell me about we were in Baltimore with uh, Belanger? Belanger. He didn't have it. to dive because he was always right where he needed to be to make the play every no time. No question. Kipnis goes down swinging. Indians continue to struggle to get a run across. They trail one nothing after five. Our in-game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. The only run of the game came on a wild pitch. Alexei Ramirez scored after he stole second and went to third on a ground ball. Corey Kluber has pitched a very good game. 65 pitches. 45 of those have been strikes. He's had 
two innings in which he's made less than 10 pitches. He's just been yeah, Corey Kluber. Came out of the shoot in that first inning would he have seven pitches. And I love the fourth inning where he gives up the leadoff double. Also gives up a single but doesn't give up a run. Pitched around some tough hitters. Well, I guess when we were talking about Go ahead with your Levin profile. Tyler Saladino, seventh-round pick out of Oral Roberts. Came back from Tommy John surgery. Build is the, the, the two pitchers with the least run support in the American League. Guess what? one nothing game. Yeah. That, go figure, huh? That's the one stat you can almost count on. For whatever reason, when it comes to Run support, that's a that's a stat that tends to stay with a guy. And then like you said, there's no rhyme or reason to it. One year, just you're turning the barrel. It seems and, that and way. It just doesn't you just can't, you can't shake it. <laughs> now the one two pitch. Oh, half swing pop up. Jason Kipnis has it. One away. It's going to bring up Melky Cabrera, who doubled his last time up. How focused is Corey Kluber? He's got a string hanging from his chin. He has no idea it's there. And no one dares to go up and say, hey, you got something on your chin. Well, he's thinking of throwing the next strike. And he does just that. Throws on a strike. Cabrera fouling it off. It's 0-1. Yes, Try to did. hold up. They appeal. Huh? Oh, they said he didn't go. It's a couple times tonight. Marty Foster. I think Urshela got got a break tonight earlier, and well, that actually looked like he did not go. Remember last night, Cabrera was uh, they rung him up on a pitch he didn't think he went around on, and, and it looked he like did. he was right. Yeah, he's down on the count now, a ball and two strikes. Cabrera's last at bat caught that little backdoor cutter that he stayed on and drove it nicely down the left field line. That's the inning you're talking about, that leadoff double, but he was stranded. Came so left field? That same pitch. Avilas. Two down. Time now for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. Hey, man, Rick, a couple of former teammates going at it tonight at Fenway Park. Porcello for the Red Sox, Verlander for the Tigers. Kinsler gets the Tigers on the board first in the third. Red Sox come back with a run of their own, and we're even at one. Fifth inning at Fenway. Matt, Rick. All right, thanks, Al. Two down, Jose Abreu, the batter, 0 for 2 on the night. Urshela backs up a stride or two. Last time Abreu was up, he almost killed him. This time oh he hits boy. one high and deep left center field. Of Bra- and Avilas is out of room. It is out of here. Out of here. Yeah, it hit, hit the, the railing. railing above the yellow line. And Abreu goes deep. His 15th home run of the year. A solo shot makes it 2 0 Chicago. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say this is a guy where if you pitch him in, he'll turn on the baseball. And you pitch him away, and he'll take it the other way. A big guy that has tremendous bat control. And it shows you his strength, how he hits that ball, and it hits the railing and comes back onto the field. They want it away. It creeps back, middle of the plate. Kluber realized it. He was hoping it stayed in. Avilas goes to the wall and hits the railing. So that was an easy call for the umpires. Probably sounded like the Liberty Bell. Yeah, it's true. 
So for uh, Abreu, his 15th homer, the 11th given up by Corey Kluber. And here again, I know it's only a solo shot, but it just, you know, White Sox came in with the fewest home runs in the American League, and they've now hit five in the first two games of the yeah, series. Yeah, they had two solo shots, a two-runner, three-runner last night. Center field, Michael Brantley. Inning over. Jose Abreu plays big ball, and the White Sox lead is now two to nothing. Well, as we promised you earlier, we've selected the data strong fan photo of the game. Those two girls would be would qualify, <laughs> wouldn't they? Tweet your photos Why not? to yes, hashtag sir. STO data strong fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T-Mobile. Francisco Lindor to lead off the bottom of the six drive down a pair. Pitches low. Quintana now 76 pitches on the night. Yeah, this is the 20th batter he has faced. 13 first pitch strikes to this point. Fly ball right center field. Garcia the right fielder. One down. Well, Quintana's been very effective going inside the night. He's... He's made them at least aware of that inside part of the plate. He certainly has. And you know what? He, he's worked both sides of the plate, and you have to. See that going down and in. That's the breaking ball. He's gone down and in because he goes away, you know, to throw that strike. He's got the fastball he can pitch away, and also the changeup he can go away. And then when he comes back into the right-handers, not only will he throw a fastball in, he throws that back foot breaking ball. Well, here's Michael Brantley. He has two hits on the night, a double and a single. But the single was the play that ended the third inning. Yeah. Weird play. It was a 3-2 pitch. He tried to punch one through the left side of the infield. Didn't hit it all that hard. Alexia Ramirez ran it down on the hole. But Jason Kipnis, who was running on the pitch, rounded second, literally two strides by the bag. And Ramirez threw behind him and got him to end the inning. play by Saladino the third baseman as he takes a hit away from Brantley a he was positioned perfectly and B he made a pretty nice play on a 
hard hit ball. And this guy isn't a natural third baseman, Matt. He's a second baseman by trade, and you see that hop. One hopper right there. There you go. I thought it was a, a short hop, but I did too, to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm glad I saw the replay. It was right there for him. It was easier than I thought, but you're right, right in the right position. And now with Ryan Rayburn, he moves over north toward the line. Right-handed hitter, 0 for 2 tonight. That's the pitch. A fastball away. You know he can go out there, change up away, and then when you're looking out there, he comes inside. Hitters, as you have always told me, hitters can adjust up and down. But it's very difficult to cover both sides of the plate. Yeah, yeah it is. When, when a guy's commanding both sides of the plate, he's going to have his way. See, there wow. you go. He threw All the speed. breaking ball in. Now let's go outside to bring it back in. He's really mixed it up well. You have to cut it in half and say, I'm going to look one way or the other and give him the other half. And, and if he gives you your, the pitch you're looking for, you better hit it. He stayed awfully tight to Rayburn tonight. You know, you get him looking at that back foot slider down, back foot slider down. He could go right with a fastball in, too, to try and jam him now. Well, that's how he popped him up in the fourth. Ran one right in on him. There he is, coming in. He's doing a try it again. Yes. The appeal says he went around and the inning is over. Tribe goes one, two, three for the second time tonight. And after six, it remains Chicago two, Cleveland nothing. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T U-verse, has more channels on the go than cable. Two nothing White Sox on top as we head of the seventh inning. Avisel Garcia 0 for 2 has struck out, lined out. And Corey Kluber delivers a pitch over the outside corner for strike one. And a foul over toward the on deck circle. And the 0-2 offering down low. Of 
Good Friday night crowd. Bleachers are filled up. Most of the lower deck seats are occupied. In fact, a lot of the upper deck is filled as well. One, two, pitch. <laughs> struck him out looking. Again, he comes in with that. Uh, that's the slider this time. And he's able to get it called. That's the second time Garcia has taken a called third. Half we'll dozen. Half a dozen strikeouts. We'll make that our circle K strikeout. That's the slider. First strikeout since one, he had back-to-back -back punch outs in the third. Three of those six have been called or make it four. There's Alexei Ramirez. Bloops a liner into right field. One out single for Ramirez. He has two hits on the night, both singles. Injury report brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk. Michael Kadire is on the DL. And this has a lot of the rumors and speculators out there saying that the Mets are going to look to replace him with a with a with a trade perhaps no his knee's been ailing for a while they just finally put him on call up their first round draft pick from last year a guy whose name that I've, I've read on a number of different Rumor mill sites or whatever you want to call them is a guy we just saw, uh, Gerardo Parra from the Brewers. Well, nice. That'd be a nice pickup. You know, his name's out there as a teams are going to be interested in him. That's right. He's free at the end of the year, right? Mm -hmm. He's been a spark plug for that offense for Milwaukee, though, up in that leadoff spot. But a good outfielder as well. Again, he's taken off. Oh, popped him up. See, Flowers right there should have taken a pitch and give the guy a chance to steal. He swung at a high fastball and did nothing with it, and he had a great jump. That's a, See, he smiled yep, again. Because he had it stolen. Just take the pitch. Yeah, right. I mean, to me, why a hitter swings at that is it, it, it's, it's beyond me. I mean, let your guy, he stole a base earlier, he ended up scoring. See, he wasn't even looking. He went head first. He's got to get back up and go back and flower swung at a bad pitch and made an easy out. Look at him. Can't believe it. That upsets you as a base dealer. Especially when you know you have it. Carlos Sanchez takes a strike. He flied to left his last time up. He walked. Back in the third inning. Wow. He got a huge jump, and it's he, he steals that. He like like slowed down the last 10 yards. I think if uh, Sanchez would have swung at that, Ramirez would have just kept running right on through, <laughs> out the elephant doors, and <laughs> ran back to the hotel. Look at that. Can you get a better jump than that? Second stolen base of the night. So now he's in scoring position with two outs. Well, we've said that before with Kluber and a lot of pitchers, the way they angle themselves, they can't see the runner at first base. So... Is the, does the first baseman have to be very extremely vocal to help you out on a play like that? Well, or is it you not even do, matter? but you know what? Uh, sometimes they're, they're locked in. They don't know. They're, they're just waiting on a time, a time thing. They're programmed to throw their pitch. He took off, and by the time I think Aguilar could even say anything, it, it was too late. That happens to a lot of pitchers, that they don't even see the runner over there. I remember Jake Westbrook was one when he was here. You know, he was a sinker ball. And he, yeah. You know, they, they, they put their chin down into the 
you know, the center of their chest, and they act like they're looking over there, but they, they can't, can't see, see over there. You need eyes behind your head. There are two down and a one-two count. The one, two, yeah, strike three called. Oh, Clover will get him looking at a pitch on the inside part of the plate. His seventh strikeout of the night, which brings us now to the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. nothing Chicago bottom of the seventh inning Carlos Santana will lead it off for the Indians little tapper right back to the mound and Quintana will throw to first one away. As promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. 32 years ago today, one of the most controversial moments in baseball history. The Yankee Stadium in New York, George Brett goes deep. But upon further review, Tim McClellan says there's too much pine tar on the bat. You're out. Home run doesn't count. <laughs> George Brett goes berserk. I mean, he completely lost. Joe Brinkman was trying to hold him back. And you know who was on the coaching staff that tried to hold him back? Rocky Colavito. Yes. Beloved former Cleveland Indian, but nobody had any success no. holding Brett back. No, he wanted that home run. They ended up going back. And Well, what's really interesting, there's a lot. There's a book out now. Uh, let's see if I can find out who the writer was. I don't know if I have it here. But there's a there's a book about just about the Pine Tar game. And... One of the things I was reading uh, some of the old stories that are online about that game. I thought it was interesting that when. So the American League president uh, Lee McPhail, I believe it was, he said, uh, no, 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 no. You got to go back and finish the game. The home right. run counts. It's a good home run. Um, and you have to go back and finish the game. So they did. And on August the 18th, when that happened. George Brett watched the rest of that game from an Italian restaurant in Jersey. 
because Brett, even though the home run was upheld, McPhail figured, you know, the way he went bananas, I yeah. have to do something. So he retroactively ejected him from the game. Is the league right? president did. <laughs> so there's a lot of really interesting anecdotes and information about that game, um, which also I thought it was also interesting. You would love this. Burt Campanaris was injured, so Billy Martin had Don Mattingly play second base for the final third of the inning. Yeah, so the left-handed. Believed to be the only second left-handed second baseman to play. Yeah. 2-2, two, two, swung out and missed. Gomes down on strikes, two away. That's number seven for Quintana. And that's seven in a row he's retired. Jesus Aguilar, one for two with a single, struck out his last time up. Oh, that's not a strike, but it was called one. That was off the plate, and Flowers Flowers did a nice job well, of bringing it back yeah, on the dish. Yeah, take a look at it. You're right, he's staying out there, but he's been around there all night long, and now he's starting to get him. Runs one upstairs, and Quintana boy, just boy, schooled oh the Indians here in the seventh. He has retired eight straight. He has struck out eight on the night, and he has shut him out through seven. Cast is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care is coming up next. Adam Eaton will lead it off here in the eighth for Chicago. Eaton 0 for 3 on the night, 1 for 8 in the series. Well, Corey Klober been through the lineup three times. The first time through, he threw 33 pitches. Second time, 30. And going through the third time, 28 pitches. Adam Eaton out of Kenton Ridge High School in Springfield, Ohio. Played for Miami. Reno. First 3 0 count for Kluber.
Bullseye three and one. You ever been to Oxford down in Miami? Oh, no, I have not. Beautiful campus. And a long drive from Cleveland. <laughs> three one. He tries to bunt it. It's foul. How about that? Trying to, that tells me he's just trying to get on base. If you get a 3-1 pitch and you're going to try and bunt, and it wasn't that Urshela was that far back. But he tried to lay one down and beat it out, and that's 3-2. So he'll have another chance. And the 3-2 pitch is popped up. Foul. Back out of play. Our own Court Berry trip, also a legendary product of did, Miami. Did he get a hold of you? I think they, uh, I think they raised the academic standards after he left school. The three-two liner just beyond the reach of Urshela. And over near the left field line, to cut it off as Avilas, and he holds the speedy yeah. Eaton to a single. Now, well, Mike did a really good job there getting to the baseball quickly and getting rid of it. Eaton was thinking double, but Avila says no way. He got over there, and that's the key as an outfielder. Get to the ball as quick as you can, get it in as quickly as you can, and you don't have to worry about it. Did a nice job on the backhand side. So let's see what they do here in this situation. Maybe try and add one more with the young hitter with a sacrifice. Don't know if the. They have 17 on the year as a team. Looking to see if he's going to give anything away at the plate. That's why you throw to first. Tyler Saladino punched he out has, twice his first two times up. He has two of them. Two sacrifices. So I'm thinking he's got to be bunting here. Only 39 at bats coming into the day. Hits are even at six apiece. 100th pitch of the night for Kluber. In there for a strike. Sixty nine percent strikes for Corey Kluber as usual. Close play eaten back safely though. Well, even the guy, you know, as fast as you think he can run, he only has five stolen bases out of nine attempts. And that's the thing. Coming into the day, the, the White Sox as a team, they now have 31 stolen bases with the two by Ramirez tonight. They've been caught 26 times. So here, instead of trying to steal, you may want to hit and run. Ryan Shaw, the right hander, the lefty, Mark Zipchinski. Really smothered Saladino, who was not showing any signs of bunting. No, he was not, but he, after that swing, maybe he should have. Kluber tied him up. Runner goes, pitches high, throw to second, just on the shortstop side of the bag. Third stolen base tonight. He went, he ran on an 0-2 count. You know, sometimes you figure 0-2, they have a chance to pitch out, but he got it. He had a good pitch to throw on. It was a fastball up 
Eaton gets a hand in his sixth of the year. So now nobody out. And a runner in scoring position. In the hole, a base hit left field. Eaton will have to stop at third. And now the White Sox have runners at the corners to open the eighth inning. Let's take a look. It looks it's a one-two pitch. I think it's a breaking ball. It is, and it stayed middle. It stayed to the inner part of the plate. That enabled him to pull that ball in the hole. So Eaton goes up a base. It's first and third. Nobody out. Getting into the middle part of the lineup. The Indians have their bullpen going, and Kluber's got to really do some pitching now to keep it a two-nothing ball game. Melky Cabrera, one out of three, doubled back in the fourth. Off the end of the bat. Cabrera. Two home runs in last night's game. And a foul out of play. At the corners with nobody out. Kluber's 0 2 pitch. Runner first takes off and a fair ball up the first baseline and hugged the chalk all the way down into the right field corner. Two will score and Cabrera delivers a big blow for the White Sox. A two run double to make it four to nothing. Well, and that came on an 0 2 pitch. And it comes off another breaking ball, and that one was right over the bag, and they cash in. It speeds up his bat. You see Cabrera wasn't sure. He stopped and then takes off. And it gets down into the corner. So Eaton, Saladino score. And they double their lead. It's now four to nothing. Sox. It's not like uh, Aguilar was really that far off the line because he was holding the runner. Saladino who took off. But before he could even react to get back near the line, that ball was over the bag and right down the line. So an intentional walk coming to Abreu, and we'll probably see Zipchinski to face LaRoche. White Sox on top, four to nothing. Four runs on eight hits. And there's ball four. Take one last look as uh, Terry Francona comes out to make the change. I mean, it hit the bag. I think it actually skipped right on top of the bag and then shot down the line. I thought that was a pretty good angle. More tough luck for Corey Kluber. He does allow four runs. But it was another situation where nothing on the other side of the ledger. So he leaves with the tribe down four, two on. Nobody out on the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen is for Mark Zepchinski.
Well, come on out, and you can celebrate Slider's 25th birthday with his mascot friends. That'll take place Sunday as the Indians wrap up their series against the White Sox. Plus, kids can run the bases on Kids Fun Day. As always, get your tickets at Indians.com. Two on, nobody out. Adam LaRoche, the batter. He's one out of three on the night. And Mark Zipchinski is the new Indians pitcher. Smashed to first off the glove of Aguilar, but he can't recover in time, and everybody's safe. The bases are loaded. Aguilar went to the backhand, and he did not come up with the ball cleanly, and then to add insult to injury, it ricocheted about 10 feet away from him. And by the time he got to it, even LaRoche was able to beat it out. Yeah, there's a short hop, and he stayed back on it off the glove. Doesn't catch it cleanly. He slides down by the time he flips it. He's going to be safe at first base, so an error. And Sox are in business. What do we got? We got a challenge here? That could be, yeah, it looks like yes. Terry Francona figures what the heck we need to take a chance here. It was close. I thought when I looked at it the second time I thought you know he might have been out. Let's see. Wow. I don't know if that foot's on the base it, yet. It's it's it, it's close. Is there enough there to overturn it I guess. Uh, you know what it looked like he might have been out. This was the angle I thought when I looked at it the second time I thought they might have had him. I think they do. I agree with you. I don't think his foot was on the base. Ball's in the glove right there. His foot was still up in the air. Well, that's going to be a big I, call. I, I think it, it's close enough. I think he, uh, they caught it before his foot hit the base. Because that'll be the first out, and it'll be second and third. He is yes, out. Yes, indeed. And there you go. They needed that. So the instant replay review. Greg Langman doing a good job of getting the information to Terry Francona saying, yeah, challenge that baby. Boy, is, that's one of those plays where, Rick, where everybody feels better about themselves now. Aguilar feels great. He doesn't get the error. Yeah, they well, they got the call right. The out. Yeah, it was close. It was bang, bang, but they get the call right. Zipchinski's gone for I one hitter. I suppose ideally would have been, had he come up with it cleanly, he probably would have had a double play or at least a chance at it. In any event, there's one out, runners at second and third, and we've got another pitching change. <laughs> oh boy, it's a 4 nothing White Sox lead as we are in the eighth inning. There are two on with one out. The new Indians pitcher is Brian Shaw. He'll be facing the right handed hitting Avisail Garcia. Shaw making his 42nd appearance of the year, and he is 
Been in a pretty good groove of late. Shaw in his last 20 games has pitched 20 in two-thirds innings, and he has given up two earned runs with 18 strikeouts during that time. But he's in a tough spot here. Now, these runners, obviously, should they score, they wouldn't be counted against his ledger. That's the old inherited runner stat. With the infield in, Garcia awaits. He chases one out of the strike zone. Boy, he sure did. That right there, he wants to get him in. He's a, that's impatience. Uh, you may not have to throw him a strike for a while. Shaw's uh, inherited 30 runners for the season. Nine have scored. Right back. Ooh, had a good cut. Good shot. Left that one right there. Boy, he had a good pitch to hit and fouled it straight back. He got away with one there. The one-two pitch, a little bit outside. Now the two-two. Slowly chopped the first. Aguilar waits back on it. And he did a nice job to look Cabrera back. Make sure he wasn't going to try to break. He gets the out. Two yeah, down. Second out of the inning and a chance to get out of it now and keep it a 4 nothing game. Well, it's another Sugardale Dollar Dog night on Tuesday as the Indians will take on the Kansas City Royals. Fans can enjoy Dollar Dogs all night long. Um, go to Indians.com. Now with two down, Alexi Ramirez, the batter, he's two for three on the night. Not having a very good year, but he seems to be having a pretty good series. Four hits, he waves at that one. Boy, Shaw, it's like he had the ball on the end of a yo-yo string. Ramirez, four hits, a home run. You can see how anxious they get when they get those runners in scoring position. They want to get after it early. He hit the corner of the Are bag. Are you kidding me? Second time in the inning, the Sox hit the bag at first, and it plates two more. Wow. Jesus Aguilar is saying, "Are you kidding me?" Well, I, I mean, this is uh, Ramirez's series. That, that's unbelievable. It looked like it caught the back part of the bag, and it'll go as a double, and it'll drive in the two out there with two outs, make it a six-nothing ball game. Shaw can't believe it. Good pitch off the end of the bat. The back side of the bag, yes, it did. Back part of the bag. Those two runs will belong to Corey Kluber, so they close the book on him. Wow. Now, Cabrera's double, it was a bouncing ball, and I'm pretty sure it hit the bag as well. But this one, on the fly, caught the bag, and both times the White Sox end up plating two runs. A four-run eighth inning. And so those two inherited runners we were talking about with Shaw both come home to score. But they, uh, they'll they go on Corey Kluber's ledger. So he surrenders six on the night. Yeah, so the second time in this series in the first two games, they had a four-run fourth inning last night. They have a four-run eighth inning tonight.
Tyler Flowers 0 for 3 tonight. And it's outside. One and two to count. Flowers strikes out and the inning is over but the White Sox twice hit a ball right down the first baseline and they count for four more runs lead it six nothing. Six nothing. The White Sox lead it. And Jose Quintana has been in control all night. He's given up just six hits. He had a little bit of trouble in the second on back to back singles, but he got a double play ball to get out of it. Then in the third, two more hits and a very sharp defensive play by his shortstop, Alexi Ramirez, got him out of trouble there. After that, Rick, the Indians have not threatened. He no. has just carved them up. Well, he's been he's been dominant. He's he's pitched in, out, up, down. He's used all quadrants of the strike zone, and uh, he has been on a roll. He hasn't walked a hitter. Now I told you coming into this game, he had only walked one in his last five starts. Well, he's been in total command tonight. And you think about it, Samarja did the same thing last night in his eight innings, gave up four hits. Just the one run didn't walk anybody. He pitched a dandy last night. A little bit low but it's right at the bottom of the strike zone evidently one and one to count. Quintana closing in on that magic 100 pitch mark. Up the middle. Forget it. Another great play by Ramirez. It's Forget his night, it. folks. It's his series to this point. There's no doubt. You keep it away from that guy. He has been unbelievable in this series defensively. Anywhere it's been hit, he's been able to make the play. He even had to throw behind a runner today to get one. Nice play. Watch this one. Between the legs flip. Yeah, and they just had the touch on it, whereas. Second baseman could just pick it up right there. He has had a, a whale of the first two games in this series. Not only that, he had three hits tonight. Two last night. Two last a homer. night. He had a three run homer. He's had, wow, good series.
Jeff Samarja the starter last night went eight gave up one run. Quintana pitching into the eight has not allowed a run. So there's the story on the other side. For Chicago. Broke his bat. Ramirez again. Why not? Two down. Here's our AT&T U-verse rewind. Jose Quintana we talked about in. Out but more effectively in tonight. He's just. Well and, and he's. Proved he can throw that pitch down and uh, away to the right handed hitters and he's been coming inside. He's been getting him to chase pitches down and away. Right handers up and away. He's used four quadrants of the strike zone. What pitchers have to do he's elevated change the eye level. He's put on a clinic tonight. And a roller to first. Abreu takes it himself. Quintana has retired 11 in a row. And we go to the ninth. Looking back at our keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. It hasn't really been the home run tonight per se that has hurt the tribe though. Abreu did hit a solo shot. It's that they haven't scored. Again. Yeah. I mean that, that that's an ongoing thing. Six times this year with Bluebird on the mound they did not score. But you know we when you keep it a game and he did for seven innings and all of a sudden some you know some things happen and they they blow it open in the in the eighth. Ryan Webb coming on the pitch now for the Indians here in the ninth inning. Scott Casimir is making his uh, debut for the Houston Astros yeah, tonight. I see that. Four innings. He's given up uh, just three hits to Kansas City. Meanwhile, Jeremy Guthrie for the Royals, given up ten hits in the first five innings. He's allowed four runs, and the Astros lead it four nothing. In Boston, the Red Sox and the Tigers. 1 1 in the top of the eighth inning. Justin Verlander bouncing back, seven innings, giving up just one run on seven hits. 
former Tiger Rick Porcello went seven gave up one run on five hits popped up out goes Lindor he's called off and it drops well he did he must have hurt somebody or he would uh, not have peeled off I don't know if uh, Avila's called for it but he certainly had no play on it and it looked like uh, Lindor was underneath it take a peek yeah. Let's see if he raises his hand he doesn't he's going and then he must hear something and then Avila says that's exactly what happened and he couldn't get there so it'll go as a base hit Adam Eaton looks at a ball outside. If it seems like Adam Eaton was just up, it's because he was in the eighth inning. Chicago sent eight men to the plate. Missed inside. Bounces it foul. Off the foot. <laughs> Lead off man aboard for Chicago here in the ninth and a 2 2 count for Adam Eaton. Webb trying to get him to beat one into the ground. He pops one in the air instead. That's a long run for Brantley all the way to the warning track and about a stride or so in front of the wall for out number one. That a long way in the air for sinker baller. Yeah, and you know Adam Eaton, although he did homer last night, not a guy you think of as going to be somebody to drive one to the big right. part of the ballpark, right? But he put a pretty good jolt into that baby. Eaton's hit eight home runs this year. Tyler Saladino singled and scored in the eighth. To third or shallow will go to second. There's one. Kipnis on to first. Aguilar couldn't come up with it. Rick, I couldn't tell if it, if Aguilar was trying to find the bag with his foot and maybe took his eye off the ball. <laughs> Pat O'Brien, Chevrolet play of the game. Couple of doubles for the White Sox played in four runs in the eighth inning. Yeah, that was the first one. He didn't think it was fair when he left the bag or when he left the box. And then this one hits the back part of first base to drive in the last two. Cabrera takes a strike. I couldn't see it over there at first base. I thought that play, you know, the double play was going to be turned. They had the time. 
I don't know if the throw brought him off the bag or not. To left field, this could be trouble. Long run for Avilas. He makes a fine running catch just inside the line to end the inning. Nice effort by Avilas. It ends the top of the ninth, but the Sox still lead it. Six nothing. Stay tuned for Indians Live, presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care, coming up next. Here on Sports Time Ohio. Meantime, we're going to the bottom of the ninth. Jose Quintana's going for a complete game shutout. He's never had a complete game. Never had a shutout. He's gone eight innings six times in his career. He's done it once this year. So, I mean, he's been dealing. Robin Ventura says, go ahead. You've earned the right to go out there and try and complete this. This is your game. And he has been very good. Lindor takes a breaking ball for a strike. High pop. Left field foul ground. And the third baseman, Saladino. That's a tough break. You're tracking it the whole way. He's thinking, I got it, I got it, I got it. And eventually it just, you just fades run out, on into yeah, the seats. You run out of room. All three guys were going over there converging on it, but it makes the seats. Yeah, the last uh, Indians hitter to reach was the Urshela single back in the fifth inning, a one-out single. And after that, he has shut it down. He chased one. Got a piece of it. Yes, he did. Lindor trying to keep it alive for the Indians. Michael Brantley waits on deck. Hello. Coming into this inning. Quintana in the 6th, 7th, and 8th inning through 29 pitches, 20 of them strikes. Missed outside. No. 
Jose Quintana has been effectively efficient, and he's gotten better in the late innings. Yeah, but this is his fifth full count of the night. The 3-2 pitch. And Lindor socks it up the middle. A leadoff single for Cleveland that snaps a string of 11 in a row that had been retired by Quintana. All right, back up the middle. Under the feet of Quintana into center field. Couldn't get the glove down. It rolls out. Seven hits now for the Tribe. Lindor with his third hit in the series. And it brings up Michael Brantley, who has two hits on the night. Two for three. Well, I know Lindor and Brantley aren't ready to call it a game yet. And I know at least one Indians fan who's still holding out hope. Donna Wachtel is here at the ball game tonight celebrating her 80th birthday with uh, her family. Donna from Rittman, Ohio. I'm ready for the fireworks show afterwards, but she wants to see her tribe rally here in the ninth. Lindor at first. Quintana's 1-1. Low, and it's two balls and a strike. This will be pitch number 115. So a few bugs going on down there tonight, huh? Sure looks like it. Really? Oh, my. A pick at first, and Abreu's got Lindor caught in a rundown. Unbelievable. That's the way it has gone for the Indians. The White Sox hit a couple of balls down the first baseline tonight, and they both up end up in the right field corner. Four run score as a result. Brantley scorches one to first, and Abreu snatches it on the short hop, and they turn a double play. Are you kidding me? He sure did. That was a nice pick, and then he gets rid of it, steps on the base, and then in the rundown, not much he can do there. Just prolong it. He tried to get down, but he's tagged out. So Quintana trying to do something he's never done. And this get, that gives him the chance because if that ball gets by Abreu, then obviously Robin Ventura's in the bullpen. And Quintana's probably out of the game because the pitch count was really starting to climb on him. And now he's got a chance. Ryan Rayburn 0 for 3. Takes a strike. Upstairs. Ryan Rayburn down on the count, one and two. <laughs> Jose Quintana. Looking in, and the 2-2 delivery to Rayburn right back up the middle. But who's behind the bag to get it? Sanchez, and he throws him out to end the ball game. The Indians are shut out by Chicago. The final score is 6 to nothing as Jose Quintana goes the distance for the first time, blanking the Indians on seven hits here tonight. He goes to 5-9 and nine on the year. Chicago goes to 44-50. and 50. 
Corey Luber will Corey Kluber will take the loss. He's five and eleven, and the Indians fall to forty-five and fifty. And now in two games, the Indians have mustered one run in eighteen innings against Chicago pitching. And guess what? We're facing Chris Sale tomorrow, so it's not going to get any easier. And Chicago comes back, and I'll tell you, Quintana did something he's never done before: pitched a gem. Came out his first complete game shut out. He's look at it. Look how happy he is. He was dealing tonight. He was really good. Seven hits, scattered them, and you know, again, a guy that never gets a lot of runs. He's uh, the leader in the American League. So they finally get him some, and he gets a win. He was good. I guess the question for Terry Francona and company is, at what point do we stop saying, "Boy, the guy was really good tonight," and do something about? Getting that offense kicked into gear. Well, I don't know what more you can do. I mean, you go up there, you keep swinging, you keep, they just, that's just the way it's going right now. Yeah, they are mired in an offensive slump that does not appear to be going away anytime soon. They're down 6 no, they lose 6 nothing tonight, and as Rick said, they've got Chris Sale staring at them on the horizon tomorrow. For Rick Manning and Andre Knott, I'm Matt Underwood. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for Indians Live. Coming up next.